move my compressor into place. Oh my God. Oh my God. This cool air ice machine is not making any ice. We're gonna diagnose it, troubleshoot it, figure out why it's not making ice and hopefully repair it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the front panel by taking out the two screws. I'm gonna take off the top cover and each of the side panels just to give myself as much access as possible. And as of right now, the machine is currently unplugged. I'm also gonna remove this 516 screw and this cover so I can see my control board. With my cover removed, I plugged the ice machine back in and now I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna follow the sequence of operation. I don't have any power yet. Let me see what's going on. Turns out I plugged in the dispenser, not the ice machine, but we have power now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the sequence of operations and figure out what goes wrong in that sequence. So the first 45 seconds, this machine is gonna have the water pump and the dump valve energized, and it's gonna pump all the water that's in that tray down the drain. And then you'll have a click, which will be the hot gas valve or harvest valve energizing. And then five seconds after that click, the compressor will start and then you'll be in pre-chill and the water will start flowing into the water trough. So somewhere along that line, something's gonna go wrong and we're just gonna wait and figure out what that thing is. And here comes the click. There's the click. Five seconds later, compressor should start. Uh, my contactor just pulled in and my water inlet valve just energized, but my compressor back there is not running. I'm gonna turn this off to make sure that my compressor doesn't overheat and go out on internal overload. But I can, I can kind of tell right now that the issue is between my contactor and the compressor. The control board is energizing the contactor like it's supposed to, but the compressor is not energizing. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the contactor is actually passing power to the compressor before I go over there and start diagnosing whether or not the compressor is good or bad. I reset the machine and we're in the initial purge like before. And I'm gonna show you real quick that the left side of the contactor, which is the line side, which just means that's the incoming voltage, has 120. We're about to hear that click. That's the harvest valve. And then this far side is the compressor side or the load side of the contactor. And it is passing power. So at least we know that the contactor is doing its job. It's passing power through to the compressor, but the compressor is still not energizing. Before I go to diagnose the compressor or start taking the wires off, I'm going to see if the compressor is even pulling any amps, if it's even trying to turn. It's possibly locked up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this black wire right here, which is the common wire that goes to my compressor. I'm going to put a clamp over it wait till the compressor tries to start and then measure what that reading is. Machine has been restarted. The contactor is getting ready to pull in, in about five seconds. My clamp meter is in place and we're gonna see what this is. Okay, my meter set to read the clamp. Clamp's in place. There is no amp draw. So next step is to get back there, take the wires off the top of the compressor and start testing my compressor. But before we do that, we're gonna make sure we unplug the machine because we do not want to get electrocuted. The black cap comes off the compressor and then we'll be able to see the wires. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, I'm just gonna pull those off, the wires off of the post so I can test. Just remember what color goes where. Black is common, red is run, and yellow is start. I cut the drain on this machine so I can get better access. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to check between our start winding and our run winding and see what our reading is. If I can hold it still, what is that? Point zero. I'm going to change my setting. All I did was turn off the beeping sound. So between run and start, I'm measuring 5.3 ohms. And I'm going to measure between common and start. If I can get these things to sit still. So with my leads between common and start, I'm getting no reading, 
which means the circuit is open and it shouldn't be. If the compressor was hot and the machine and the compressor was out on an internal overload, which just means the internal safety of the compressor opened to protect the compressor from getting way too hot, that would require me to let this thing cool down to make sure that the internal overload is actually closed. This thing is cold, it's not warm at all. I don't think through my troubleshooting, it had ever gotten power at all, or if it had gotten power, it wasn't actually able to try to run because the, the circuits or the windings inside of this compressor are open. So where there's no power flow, no heat generation. So long story short, bad compressor, and this compressor is gonna need to get replaced. Just so happens that I have myself a compressor and we're gonna go ahead and repair this ice machine. We're gonna recover the refrigerant, remove and replace the compressor and the filter dryer and see if that fixes our issue. In order to repair this ice machine, we're gonna do a couple of things. First, I'm gonna set up my refrigerant hoses and gauge to recover the refrigerant into that recovery tank down there. I'm also going to remove some of these panels, some of these wires I'm gonna disconnect, some zip ties back there to give myself as much access as possible to get to this compressor because the more access you have, the easier the job is. Gauges are all set up, purged out my lines, purged out my recovery machine, that's open. The pressures are essentially equalized between the tank and the ice machine. Now I'm just gonna plug it in, finish it out. These gauges will eventually go uh, below zero, which just means all of the refrigerant is removed from the ice machine. The recovery process is done. Like I said before, my gauges are now in the negative pressure. I'm not going to break the vacuum because I don't want, I'm not gonna break the vacuum by opening that because I don't want a bunch of air to suck into my ice machine. And I'm going to be purging nitrogen while I weld. Just so everyone's aware, you purge nitrogen to keep the inside of your copper from getting dirty. And then as you can see, I removed this whole back panel. It is now hanging right here. There's just a bunch of screws you take out. Took out a couple zip, zip ties. I also removed the clips from the compressor itself. That way when it's done being welded, we can just lift it up and out of place. Like I had mentioned earlier, flowing nitrogen through my system to keep the inside of my copper lines nice and clean. I'm going to unweld all of these, show you what it looks like when it's done and then I can remove it. The old filter dryer is removed. The old compressor is all unsoldered. So now it's just a matter of pulling it out of its home. And we're gonna go set it over there on the cart. Old compressor, new compressor, old filter dryer, new filter dryer. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these off, move, move my compressor into place. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just freaking popped oil all over the place. That sucks. That's never happened before. I had to go get a rag and just dry up all the oil. But essentially, I'm just gonna take this and this and go set them up in place and get ready for welding. New compressor set in place. I have my copper lines kind of pushed in. I'm still purging nitrogen and my filter dryer is in place. I need to get this welded in, cool this off, get my Schrader back in there and get this thing into a vacuum as fast as I can. The welding is all done. I did a visual inspection. I will still pressurize, spray it with some leak detector, but just so you can get a visual of why we flow nitrogen, uh, if you see how dark that copper line is, and then if I go ahead and wipe it, see how all that black soot just kind of wipes off there and is now on the inside of this rag. If you don't flow nitrogen, that forms on the inside of the copper, but if you flow nitrogen, the copper stays nice and clean. So you should always flow nitrogen to keep the inside of the copper line nice and clean. I have pressurized my system with nitrogen to just over 250 PSI. We are gonna be using some of the big blue sub-zero micro leak detector. We're just gonna spray our welds and we're gonna end up wiping it around and then wait just a couple minutes and then we'll see if we have any bubbles and if we do that means we have a leak and we need to re-weld but i'm pretty pretty sure that we're going to be looking really good 
If you want to find this, check out the link in the description. That way you can find it on Amazon. Before I do my cleanup, put all this stuff away, I'm going to start running my vacuum because this ends up being a long process. One of my hoses is connected to the filter dryer. There's a red tag up here that basically says, don't charge the system through the front service ports. You have to charge the system through the replacement filter dryer that has a service port on it. Uh, if you don't, you risk feeding liquid refrigerant directly to the compressor and ruining the compressor. So that's why it's set up this way. I'm gonna click this on, wait for that number to go to 500. So we are under 500 microns. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off, set this up to recharge, and we're going to charge through the filter dryer in the back. We are open here, open here, not yet open here, closed and open and open. So if we turn this, it should start pulling our refrigerant into the system. Keep an eye on our scale. It's gonna take a little while to get all the charge in there. Charging this thing back up with refrigerant ended up being kind of a pain, but I got it done. It's charged. My charging hose still has liquid refrigerant in it. So I need to suck it all in through the low side. I've got my back panel all put in, compressor secured, a couple, couple last little like tidy up type things to do, like put these wires inside of this clip. Somehow, some way, along with these wires, put it in, all inside the clip, It'll help keep them from rubbing on anything. Uh, put your wires back on top of the compressor. That filter dryer back there has been capped. I need to put a zip tie around it, keep that from rattling. And then, like I said, last couple little housekeeping things, the panel, I'm gonna turn this on right now and I'm gonna make sure all my refrigerant is in the system before disconnecting my gauges. So we just cycled in the harvest in about 45 seconds to a minute and a half, ice is gonna fall from the, the evaporator. We'll dispense a little bit, take a good look at it, see what it looks like, and then throw the front panel on. I think we have curtain movement, ice should fall. Just like that. See if we can get something to come out. That's what we look like. Cubes look pretty good. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to check out Ice Machine 411. With a lot of different videos for troubleshooting ice machines, Manitowoc, Hashizaki, Scotsman, Somatic, as well as the cool air that we just looked at. We'll see you on the next one.